Our purpose in life is to seek knowledge every single day, then turn around and pass the torch of knowledge on to someone else. If you want to leave a legacy, seek knowledge and pass the torch. Raphael is an adventurer at heart, loves discussing new business ideas, and is on a mission to help people live a life they are proud of through data, process, and technology. By day, he works as the Director of Strategic Initiatives at ThoughtWire, a high-growth technology company that is helping hospitals, buildings, and cities operate in a smarter, healthier, and safer way. By night, he is building my technique a personal development company using media and technology to help you design the systems you need to succeed at what matters most. Their flagship offering, the Canvas Series Podcast, is a monthly show about busy people and how they are designing systems in their life to act intentionally, stay organized, and create results that matter. They also launched a weekly show, Break the System, which unpacks the theory behind different life and productivity systems and explores what it means for you. I hope you brought your torches because Raphael brought the fire. Let's go. All right, we are on another episode of Pass the Torch podcast. And today we have Raphael Wong in the house. So excited to have him on the show. Welcome to Pass the Torch podcast. Thank you so much for the invite, man. Definitely. We had to have you on the show. Uh, it, it's always cool to have someone else who's doing something very similar. Um, and, and I've been watching your journey, so I'm excited to share that with the viewers here and the listeners and, uh, and just talk about what you're doing. So the, the first question I ask every single listener, uh, it, it's always nuanced and different for each person, but it's uh, just tell us like where, where you're from um, and how you got on this journey and, and what is your why for being on this journey? For sure. Um, so my name is Raphael Wong. I've, I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada. I've been here my whole life. You know, a little bit about myself. You know, if I were to you know, describe my, myself with one word, I would use the word adventure. Um, and that's, you know, and that's more than just the traditional sense of traveling. That's adventure in the sense of um, continuous learning and curiosity and being intentional about that, whether it's in terms of exploring new communities and, and friendships and relationships. And that's largely the, the main reason why I started the podcast on my in the first place, learning about new businesses and technologies and innovations. And this sense of curiosity is something that I've always um, embodied in my life. And that kind of started, that's how I uh, you know, what got me on this journey on personal development. Um, it was really around how can I, uh, you know, take in different theories from different bodies of knowledge, whether it's in science and, and like, you know, particularly neuroscience, psychology, technology, management, and so on and so forth. And how can I improve my life? How can I um, do more, create more value, um, and really live a life I'm proud of, right? And And if I were to really sum my my why up in one sentence it's you know how can i live a life i'm proud of and by virtue of that that's that's created opportunities that's allowed me to um, enable others to live a life they're proud of through you know really beginning my career in management consulting and now building content building technology building systems to help others live a life they're proud of and i truly believe if every human in the world can do that uh, this world would be a better place I love that. That's that is something that I try to do uh, in my life as well. Absolutely, looking at the. I mean, we're a mentorship company, and and making sure that okay. First, I need to make sure I'm proud of how I'm living, and also what I've what I've realized, especially is all the way back in high school, one of my biggest mentors. Um, I always have his his name Sergeant Major Frank, and I always have him in the back of my head and thinking, what is if if I were to have a conversation with him with him. How would I perceive what I'm doing? And then also how would those people who took the time, invested their time to me to see me uh, succeed, uh, would they be uh, happy with, with the decisions I made? So, And, and I love that. It sure. literally transforms where you're at in life. For sure, right? And, you know, I think often I the response I get with that 
answer is that, you know, uh, uh, does it seem too individualistic? Does it seem too selfish? And, and my answer is, you know, um, if you, uh, you know, like every night when I, before I go to sleep, I ask myself the question, you know, did I live a day that I'm proud of? Yeah. And that, that usually manifests in some way of, you know, looking after my own health and wellness and my own body, but also how did I add value to those around me? How did I, um, you know, make life a little easier for my girlfriend? How did I create some value and open new opportunities for my friends and my community? So you know, I think you know, when, when, when I talk about living a life I'm proud of, while it's focused on me, um, to live a life I'm proud of is usually a byproduct of the things I do for other people. And I think that's really important to distinguish. And um, I think it's something that you know, if everyone focuses on again, it, it's really around you know, what does it mean? And I think, you know, like, you have to also help yourself before you help others. And I think that's something that's often forgotten um, in this world of adding value. Everyone's so focused on that. Uh, and they forget that if you're not healthy, if you're not energetic, if you can't bring insights to the table, then, you know, I think you're really leaving a lot of opportunity on the table, so to speak. Uh, I, I'm getting chills. First of all, I knew this, <laughs> I knew this was going to be a great show having you on. Um, yeah, that's, ex that's exactly it. And I love the fact that you said you have to help yourself. Um, so again, I am active duty Marine Corps, and uh, I always bring stuff up for that reason. Is that our mindset is is self aid, buddy aid. If you get hurt on the battlefield, um, you need to okay, you're gonna help your buddy, right? But you have to make sure that your weapons are clean, that you're able to fight, and that you're taking care of yourself so that you can actually help the person to your left and right. Because if you don't, exactly. you're no good. So yeah, this applies in the military standpoint definitely applies in the business standpoint and then at the greater world i love the fact that you said that for sure something that i've been really fixated on and this really stemmed this really i started to manifest itself around november where i i took a, a few days and i flew down to new york just to spend some time alone and and i did a lot of thinking and you know one thing i realized was you know, on the career front, uh, you know, working at a high growth tech company, you know, doing strategic initiatives, you know, like opening new markets and doing a ton of things from a business standpoint, um, on my own mission perspective, you know, launching my company, my technique, uh, doing the podcast, the canvas series and everything else. I realized that I was making a lot of progress in those two fronts, but I had a lot of areas of improvement on the other aspects of my life, primarily my health, um, my um, the time I spend with my f friends and family and my community. So recently, I say over the last three or four months, I've really focused on building capacity, mm -hmm. right? And and if that means you know slowing down a little bit on the career mission side, but building the capacity to be healthier, to bring more energy, to invest in these relationships, to uh, invest in my own learning, and to be a student again, that's something that's really important for me right now. And I would say just going forward for the rest of 2019. 100% Raph like that's that's so so huge and especially in the entrepreneurship world today it's it's go 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 hustle 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 yeah. if you don't take care of yourself if you don't build that ability for capacity uh, you're gonna be done before you really get started this is a marathon and you have to yeah. pace yourself and even I, I I'm guilty of the same thing and uh, end of 2018 I said you know what going into 2019 I'm gonna be way more deliberate about what I'm doing. It doesn't mean I'm not doing a lot, but I'm going to be very conscious of when my body tells me I need to slow down. I'm going I'm going to slow down. I'm going to figure it out. For sure, and that's you know really what you know we've centered um, the core value prop at my technique, which is really around building these systems that allow you to act more intentionally, right? I think you know like in today's world in 2019, um, you know society has never been so busy, um, so noisy, and so multifaceted, right? I, I think the days of just going to work and then and then life that split um, is quickly uh, diminishing and is becoming more multifaceted, right? I am a technology person by day, but I'm also a podcaster by night, but I'm also a traveler. I'm going to Vietnam in April. So, uh, you know, we've never been so multifaceted and, and I think that's okay. I think that's what makes um, us uh, interesting and unique. And it's really around, how, you know, to your point, how can we be deliberate and how can we be intentional about all of these priorities in our life? And 
mentors is obviously a big you know, component. You know, when I think of these systems, I think of processes. So habits and routines, I think of tools like, you know, physical journals or digital tools, but people, I think people is one area that we don't think enough about in terms of how can we, how can we engage the people around us in our lives to help us move forward and live a life we're proud of. And then by virtue, you know, create more value for the broader uh, communities and who I surround myself with in terms of these mentorship type relationships is so important for my growth and for the people that I serve as well. I love it. Yeah. Biohacking, human hacking, like that, yeah. that's a real thing. You're, you're right. We are super busy and the world is becoming more technologically advanced uh, by, by the day. But at, at the end of the day, we're still human beings and exactly. we have to, we have to always come back to that. And it, yeah, uh, who you're surrounding yourself with, is going to be a direct result. I mean, I, I always say the quote uh, that you're the average of the five people you spend your most time with. That's going to be who you end up being uh, or, or the success that you end up uh, achieving. For sure, right? And, you know, like when I think about being intentional, to your point, you know, like if you are uh, the average of the people you surround yourself with, how can you make sure that you you are cultivating the relationships that align with your priorities, right? I think, you know, there are certain people I surround myself with that help me develop my entrepreneurial sense, so to speak. So, you know, whether it's uh, people that, yeah, you know, give me advice and, you know, share with me their stories or people who are interested in doing the same thing in terms of their journey, that's one group of people. And then there's also say, um, the uh, traveling folks and the people who are into personal development, people into health and wellness, people into uh, technology in general. So I think the more we can be intentional about who we spend our time with, where we invest our energy and our attention, I think you know that's that's something that's so important for everybody. Huge, huge. So understanding you're an insanely busy guy. I just I, I'm watching your content all the time. I'm a fan of yours. Um, I want my audience to get more familiar with, uh, let's talk about the Canvas series because that's really how I found out about you, how I discovered mm -hmm. you through uh, social media. And then super excited to hear about the transition to my technique. Yeah, so the Canvas series... Um, it's a podcast for busy people, and it's uh, ultimately my job to uh, unpack um, my guests and their stories and what systems that they are creating that helps them um, uh, um, act intentionally, stay on top of their priorities, and really create the results that matter. And the founding concept of the name, the Canvas series, is this belief that, you know, you know if you use uh, – um, the canvas as a metaphor of life, you know, it's really up to the individual person to, to design what works for them. You know, what are their priorities? What do they care about? What do they want in their life? And it's my job to give people the tools, you know, give them all the paintbrushes and colors and whatever it may be so that they can design their own uh, life canvas. And that's really the underlying principle at the canvas series and my technique, right? It's this idea that the principles of success are universal. Right? There's no secret, right? If you set goals, if you have good habits, if you're disciplined, if you're self-aware, um, you know, the, these are very universal principles, but how they're applied is personal. And that was, I think, the aha moment for me over the last couple of years is really around everyone's situation is different. They come from a different set of circumstances. They have a different set of goals. They have a different set of resources available to them. And I think you know, prescribing, you know, like cookie cutter, like here's 10 rules to do X. I don't think that works. I think, you know, we have to, to shift, um, especially in the personal development space from prescribing um, canned solutions to giving people tools and giving people the insight so that they can come up with their own views and frameworks and models of the world and they can... <laughs> Um, they can pursue their journey on their own. And that's really where my technique comes in, right? The word technique is an ancient Greek word for practical knowledge, right? This is a form of knowledge around um, making and doing things. This is context dependent. This is about creating outcomes. Um, and that's very different from a theoretical knowledge, which is more, you know, mathematics and science. And this is where those um, those universal success principles come from. They're theoretical. Everyone knows what they are, but techniques around how do you apply it that works for you? How I apply my goal setting techniques is very different from how you do it. And I think that's okay as long as it works for us and we can live in a way that is intentional, again, um, and create the results that matter to us. And I think you know, that's what a life um, that we're proud of means. I love that. 
and again the the practic practical application of that that's that's absolutely huge it's, it's great to have those uh wave top or theoretical conversations uh or even ph philosophical conversations but when you start getting to this is the practical application these are the steps that uh, in one way, shape, or form, need to be done to get to X, Y, and Z. Um, people start to say, "Hold on, this is this is a big elephant," but I'm starting to see that there's certain pieces of how I can eat this elephant one bite at a time. Yeah, that's really my goal with my technique is to become the industry standard, so to speak, on what is a life system. Mm -hmm. You know, like back to what I mentioned earlier around. You now, like I see a system as a as a combination of processes, tools, people in your environment, and how do you design that system that works for you? And the Canvas series, the monthly show where I really unpack that from the guests, right? And I ask them the same set of questions around. You know, like what are what is their version of success and what are the systems they are using to get there? And again, I think everyone's different, but I think the framework of, for what these systems are, those combination of habits and tools and people um, in the context of these success principles um, is it, something that we should be pro, um, you know, pushing more on, especially in the realm of personal development. I love that. What, what's, what's the ideal uh, experience? So someone finds you and then, they want to start their their journey with you with my technique yeah so you no know, right now we're just doing the media pieces so we haven't really gone into the technology and product yet although you know these are definitely um you know very integrated processes you know, when i think of someone who first gets engaged with us uh you know, i think of this individual as someone who who has a sense of what their why is right so i'm definitely not someone who's very good at uh, you know, like extracting that out. I think, you know, there are coaches and people who are very good at that. I think when someone has a set of directions they want to go to, but they have the question, I don't know where to start, or I don't know how to, how to juggle all these things. You know, like, what do I do? That's really where my technique in the canvas series, um, you know, really um, enters the picture and it's around, okay, so let's start simple. Let's start building these systems and let's start you know, creating that methodology so you can find out what works for you. Because often I think, you know, we, we default and we go and read a book or we listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video. Um, and, and we try a couple of things, um, you know, but we, we quickly get discouraged because not everything works. And, you know, my message is that it's okay. I think that's very okay if things don't work because it's the journey of finding out what works for you. That's what's going to create that kind of success, whatever that means to you. Um, so that's, you know, that's really where we enter. Um, the content is really around uh, giving people stories and, 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 and insights in terms of how other people do it. So a lot of the feedback I've been getting on the Canvas series is that, you know, what people like about it is because it's, it's relatable. And that's something that, like, you do as well. We're interviewing um, everyday people with everyday stories and everyday challenges and situations. And how are we going through it? You know, um, and I think it's great to listen to, like, a, like a Gary Vee or Tom, like, a, Tom, bill you in their story, but uh, it's hard to relate to them. And, and I think what you and I are doing is really around um, highlighting the stories of everyday people. How are they doing it and getting other people to join the conversation? And that's, that's the main goal right now from a media perspective. And, you know, while I interview my guests, while I engage with my audience, that's how I gather requirements from a technology perspective. This is the first piece of requirements gathering in terms of building the product. So, um, it's really my way of documenting the journey of how I'm going to build this contextual system to help every individual person, uh, you know, pull in the data that they need and create the systems to help them go through their life and create those outcomes and be more intentional and so on and so forth. No, that's huge. That's uh, yeah. I'm right there with you with the mindset of especially big name, I guess we'll call them celebrity type mentor, uh, you know, uh, figures, but there's amazing stories of the people who are in our communities. And not, not only that, but they can actually help you. Maybe they've been there. Maybe they have a person they know that they can connect you to, and we're not tapping into that. Human capital. Absolutely. It's, it's, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, one piece of advice I recently got was, you know, someone had mentioned that, you know, what they liked was that uh, the guests, they felt that they can reach out to them. You know, they can comment on their Instagram, they can shoot them a DM, and these are, aren't are really at the celebrity status here where they have millions of messages. 
that they actually can take the time to respond. And again, I think it really comes down to, you know, can you add value or not? It doesn't matter what shape or form it comes in. And I think that's the same with mentorship, right? When I think of mentorship, I think of it as a bi-directional and a mutual learning experience, right? I think in the traditional sense, when we think of mentorship, you know, that like I have a mentor and he or she gives me advice. But I would argue that I've, I've, I've contributed to their um, growth and development as well, um, even if it's not obvious. And I think that's, and even for myself as a mentor to a couple of people, they have taught me so much about the world, about business and technology, and but myself. And I think these learning opportunities with everyday people are things that everyone should be seeking and capitalizing on. Most definitely. So going into mentorship, uh, curious, just as you've grown up and even especially in your journey now, uh, how did the role of mentorship play into your life or the lack of mentorship if, if it wasn't there? Yeah, so I would say that I've been very fortunate in that I've had a lot of mentorship in my life. Um, and again, you know, if I have to, you know, be very um, uh, you know, transparent, I think mentorship is a bi-directional thing. Um, but, you know, if we follow the traditional, I'd say, um, definition of mentorship, you know, my mentors, especially in the career front, has has given me a lot of insights and advice on uh, on how to shape my thinking. And I think that's what makes a that's what makes a good mentorship type relationship. It's not about again, it's not about prescribing like you know, like hey, Raf, you should do this or that. I think asking for some advice is helpful, but you know, prescribing solutions I think can be dangerous. I think. You know, when they give me insights from their experience and their stories, when they walk me through how do they make decisions and how do I take all those insights and formulate my own point of view, formulate my own kind of framework and model of how I view the world and make decisions, I think that's what makes a very successful mentorship type relationship. Um, I actually did a podcast about this as well, about this where I interviewed one of my mentors and it's always funny because he always says that, you know, he doesn't see it that way. He always sees it as, you know, we're both learning together and he gives me insights because he's a couple of years ahead of me. But I also give him insights because I focus on a you know, different segment of the world. I, I learn and I do different things. And I think that exchange of experiences and stories and wisdom um, has really helped me in, uh, in all aspects of my life, I would say. I love that. Yeah, it's... Uh... A lot of mentoring relationships, even that I have participated in, um, I've learned more from the mentee than I thought was fair. I was like, wow, here I am. I thought I was going to go in this experience and I was going to lay down the law and this is, this is uh, you know, my knowledge. And, and I was the one who, I, at least in my mind, I felt that I got way more out of uh, the relationship. So we're still debating on, on whether that's true or not, but um yeah, it, it, it's really cool. They they tend to surprise you each and every time. For sure. And I think, you know, like back to that notion of, you know, like the first thing I said at, at the top of this episode, it was really around adventure and learning. And I think continuous learning, this idea of a growth mindset, it doesn't matter where that learning opportunity comes up that learning opportunity comes from um it can come from a child you know what i mean i think that's okay i think just walking through life with an open mind and and with a curious a sense of curiosity and a sense of discovery i think is you know really the the underlying value proposition of what mentorship is supposed to do definitely absolutely so if, again uh if, if i'm someone who's watching you watching your journey i'm like oh my gosh i would love for rap to be my mentor, uh, what would, what kind of advice would you have for that person, uh, in order to maybe approach you and then the expectations for, uh, if you were to accept that, how the relationship would unfold? Yeah. So, you know, when I think of, um, you know, um, earlier on in my uh, career, especially when I first got into consulting, I made a lot of mistakes, right. And, and I used to ask people for coffee and kind of just ask for advice, but you know, if there's one thing I've learned and this applies for when I reach out to someone or when someone reaches out to me, I think one, you need to give that person context in terms of who you are, what you care about, what resources available to you, what have you done today, what do you plan on doing next? Because without context, you end up in these like cookie cutter type solutions, these you know cookie cutter advice, and and you no. Know, 
like I think they're good, but I think they can do better. And I think one way you can help um, a mentor help you is by giving them context and having a clear ask. I think that's very important. Uh, I you know, like I always, um, when someone asks me for help or advice or support, I always you know put the question back on them. Like, how can I help you? Like, like you need to help me help you. And I think one way of doing that's having a clear ask, having some clarity, ha- you know, sharing your context or situation, so I can share with you something that's relevant and meaningful versus just something simple like you know go do something you're passionate about. Like you know, like you hear that a lot, but it's like well, it's not that simple, right? Uh, so I think that's definitely one area. I think also um, as someone reaching out, it's always, it's always good to think about how can you add value to them? And I think, um, you know, when I, you know, I I don't think people are selfish in the sense that they just want to ask and not give. I think a lot of people just don't know what they can give, you know, back to that point earlier around, you know, you know, one of my mentors, he, he's a part, he's like a senior partner at, you know, one of the top consulting firms. Um, So you kind of like, well, this guy's, he's made it like, like, what can I give? No, like, like what can I give to him? And you know, you like I'm always surprised by how much he says he learns from our interactions and whatnot. Yeah. And that takes time to learn. You know, like I, like I'd be lying if I said I started my career with this mindset. You know, this has has gone through a number of um, well, not failures, but you know, mistakes I made over time, leaving a lot of value on the table. So you know, if I had to sum it up, it's it's giving them context and finding how you can add value to them. Even if you don't think you can, I can assure you that there's something you know that's unique to you that they don't know. And, and, and you'd be surprised, especially in, in today's world with everything coming together, you know, social media being a big one, like he doesn't really know social media, but I guarantee you that social media can help him in his career as well. Absolutely. No, it's huge. I, I love the, the fact that you said, uh, make sure you have an ask. Like, okay, I know I, I love this person. I, I know they're knowledgeable. I want to uh, be... Uh, tutored by them i want i want to interact with them be mentored by them but what is your ask i it's funny i watch a show called the good doctor uh when i actually have some time it's pretty good Mm -hmm. Uh, i think it's on prime video but one thing that i really picked up from that is the patients come in there and and they have something that's wrong right and the doctor doesn't know what's wrong in the beginning and so it's a conversation of okay tell me where the pain is on a scale of one to 10, and they're going through this diagnostic process of how can I actually help you? The doctor has the skills to do it, but they need to prod and they need to go through that, that line of questioning in order to finally figure out, okay, this is why you're in the situation you are. This is why you're hurting. And I was like, wow, that's, that's entrepreneurship and, and that's mentorship too. You can't just go in the doctor's office and say, fix me. Like, yeah. Help. Yeah. That's the work. Yeah. So, um, and that's something I think about as well, right? What, you know, if I were to reach out to someone on LinkedIn or something or send them an email, um, you, you know, if I were to keep it very simple and, you know, in the spirit of being practical, uh, you know, it, it's three lines, right? It's, you know, who you are. So, hey, my name is Raphael. I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm doing this. You know, why is this? you know, something you're like, you care about. So like, well, I'm doing this because X, Y, and Z. And then it's kind of like, you know, these are the three questions I'm looking to get answered right now. Can you help me? And and you, you know, and and the reality is if that individual cannot add value to you, if they can't give you those answers to those questions, you know, you just save both of your time, but then now at least they know, okay, well, you know what? I can't speak a lot about um, time management because I'm not good at that, but I know so-and-so this guy or you know, girl who knows about it a lot, you know, maybe I can make an introduction, right? So like once you give that level of context, it helps people either think about their answers and, and solutions for you or think about what resources that are available in their network that they can get, um, make accessible to you. I love that. That's, again, super practical advice. If you're listening to this show, if you don't have a pencil or paper or something to write with, a note, I don't know, a sound recorder, make sure you do because this is fire advice. These are gems being dropped uh, at a cyclic rate. So I love that. That's, uh, that's awesome. Some of that stuff I actually, I'm like, okay, I'm going to repackage that into to content. That's, that's amazing. Absolutely. Um, okay. Another, another practical thing. What, what are some of the resources that you use could be a book program gadget that you feel contributes to your success? Uh, so podcast is definitely one of them. Uh, yeah, right. I find it's just a passive way to consume knowledge while I'm commuting, while I'm biking, cooking, whatever it is. Um, 
my calendar, man, my calendar is my life, you know, and, and it's not just about, you know, putting things in and sending reminders, but um, it's a visual representation of my life, right? Like when you think of your time, um, it, it truly is a map to, you know, where you spend your time, who you spend your time with, what you spend your time doing, right? Like those five W's. Yeah. And when I take a step back and view it, you know, it's not just time per se, but it's also energy, you know? Like I think there's certain things that drain more energy or there's certain things that give more energy. And I think the more you can be strategic about how you organize certain things, the better, right? To give an example, this past week, has been a very busy week for me. So today, it's a day where I do a lot of my creative work. I'm jumping on this podcast. I'm going to be doing some website work and whatnot. So I'm, like, I'm, like, I know that after an intense week of very critical thinking and meetings and negotiations and whatever it is, you know, I want to spend one day and be creative and tap into a different you know, side of my brain and doing something different. And then tomorrow, back on it. So the more intentional you can be about how you spend your time, your energy, and your attention, that's important. And the calendar for me is is truly that tool that I can't live without. I love that. Yeah, we're creative beings. I mean, I, I just look at the, the animal kingdom, us being one of those form of animals. I won't go too deep on that. <laughs> but it, it's crazy because I, I wrote a Medium post, uh, and it talks about human potential. And yeah. I described my dog will never have the uh, the urge to create in the same way I do. Like the dog wants to eat. He wants to go out. He wants to go for a walk. But we as human beings, which I, I, I love, uh, for some reason we think, wow, how could I fly like a bird? Like, what, what is that? Or how can I go to the moon? Or how can I build a company uh, that is about personal development that can help people uh, take data sets and, and, and form uh, a more common sense way to actually achieve their goals? That's brilliant. It's, it's all about creativity. And we as humans, we are so blessed in our lives that we among – all the other species, we're able to do that. Uh, I love that. Yes. Um, and, you know, uh, and given that, you know, like you're a technologist yourself, you know, you know, something that we're trying to do with my technique is to help people build those systems so they don't, they can save some of those uh, decision-making resources and not think about, oh, is today my gym day or is today not? Is, you know, like... You know, should I be catching up with this or that? Should I be doing this or that? Um, should I be journaling right now? Should I be reflecting right now? You know, like the more you can standardize and systemize those things, the more time, energy, and attention you free up to do those creative things. And you know, in a world where you know AI is only accelerating, a technology, you know, to your point, is is um, you know um, evolving at a daily clip. It's really around well, how do we differentiate ourselves in a world where automation is going to be by default? And I think one thing that humans can do, to your point, that animals or even technology, you know, probably can't do is how to how to envision, how to how to have a belief in something that isn't necessarily real, and then move towards it. And we've seen this, you know, amass in crazy ways. You think about religion, that whole concept is really just that. And, and it's, it's created, I mean, it's done good and bad, depending on how you look at it. But it's created empires and countries and, and businesses. And, and none of those things are really real, per se. There's no atoms on it. But um, it, it came from one person's vision of what something should be and acted on it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Going into uh, the probably a, a deeper question and it's it's what if you can give us some insight is one of the biggest obstacles uh that you've had to face maybe it's uh, recent or, or uh, as you were coming up uh that you were able to overcome with the help of a mentor or wish you had a mentor to guide you i would say the biggest obstacle for me has been uh putting my thoughts and point of view out there right I was probably like, oh, like, uh, how, how is that? This guy's got a podcast. Um, and, and, and that's been the hardest thing I've ever done. This is, is, is hard for me to do. Um, it, like, growing up, I was always, I'd say, very introverted. I, I don't like to share yeah. my thoughts and point of view with people, really. Um, and and so, so that's been the number one challenge. So starting a podcast, creating content, sharing my story on other platforms, I'm giving um, talks and speeches. That's been the hardest thing I have ever 
had to do in my life. Harder than any business decision I've had to make, harder than any physical accomplishment I've, I, I've had to do. Um, it has been the hardest and most uncomfortable thing. And I think part of that's also part of the reason why I started down this journey as well was because I wanted to um, prove to myself that I can do this, that I can share my point of view with the world. And it's been an everyday thing. Like I'd be lying to you if I said that on a daily basis, I, uh, I don't get at least or you know, probably more than one moment in that day where I, I, I have a sense of fear and I really question why I'm doing this. So in terms of mentors, you know, I've had some mentors that have, um, you know, shared with me their insights, um, ha has helped me distinguish between what is fear and, and, and really internalize the concept of uh, courage, which is really around that not removing fear because there's always fear but how to embrace and move forward in the face of fear and um and these are individuals who shared with me their stories and it always blows me away when i see someone who's super confident and they tell me the same thing that i'm telling you right now they go like oh gosh raf like I, I'm, I'm horrified i'm scared blah 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 it it gives me a sense of um it doesn't really make it any easier but it helps me understand that I'm not the only one who faces this. This is normal and just chip away at it day by day. And having done this for a couple of years now, I still feel it every single day. Um, it's still there. It's just gone a little easier in terms of facing it. That's it. I love that. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty huge. First of all, the introvert, uh, it's funny because I am a huge introvert. Yeah. <laughs> then, so I know exactly what you mean. It's it I mean, we'll do this podcast and uh maybe not for the podcast it's not as bad, but if I'm at an event, I'll tell you right now, two days after that event, for those two days I am recharging. So I yeah, just exhausted, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so I totally get you on that. Um and that's really where I thought, like I like earlier I mentioned the whole calendar thing and planning yeah. accordingly. Yeah. If I know I have a high energy thing like this, that's great. And and I don't think we should ever shy away from these things. But to plan like you know, plan appropriately, like you know, spend this evening with my girlfriend and go outside and be you know, be outside and do something different and, and, and not be in a high stress environment. And I think just the more intentional we are about it, um, it helps. It's like every single day, just putting out one piece of content, it just um, every little bit added up. And I think that's what really helped me. And it was that advice from a few mentors that has really helped me get to where I am today. It wasn't the quick and easy solution that people looked for um it, it was real it was you know this is the reality but just keep this in mind as you go through day by day and that's that's been life-changing i love that I, I so again and that reminds me of i think it's called kaizen and i'm gonna put it in the show notes and if i'm wrong i'll correct myself but it's that again that little bit every single day i, I just did a post uh i think it was on my instagram stories talking about you don't need to do a leap in a single bound. That's Superman. So we're mortals. We don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to do the yardstick. It, inch. I think we underestimate what inching forward can do to success and progress. And that's that's Kaizen. Every single day, a little bit by little bit. When you turn around, especially uh, if you look at what you did in 2018. And brother, I've been watching you. And, and I'm just blown away for what you guys are doing. And, and you've, you've gone in this like... Uh, mode of all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build, and people are scared to do that. They're like, well, if I build, then am I moving forward? Yes, you are, and then you're at, you're where you are now, and you're you're way further than you were last year. And the only way you can do that is by not being scared to actually pivot. That's a that's a huge thing, and then uh, being comfortable with the uncertainty of, of of that pivot. And you guys have done it, in my opinion, brilliantly. For sure, thank you. And I couldn't agree more, right? I think it was a James Clear um, in his blog post and I think in his book, Atomic Habits, where he talks about the 1%. And when you take 1% to the power of 365, that's a 34% improvement. So I think we underestimate um, the small little steps to your point. And I think a part of that also is a, is a byproduct of of, of uh, some of the content and advice out in the world, right? We talk about these, um, you know, how when things are taken out of context, they can actually be very misleading. And I think that whole, you know, leap of faith thing, um, I don't think a leap of faith is something you do overnight or it's a one-time leap. You know, I, um, 
I really like Reed Hoffman, obviously, for everything he does. But he talks about how entrepreneurs jump off a cliff and build a plan on the way down. That that jumping off the cliff and building your plan, uh, building a plan on your way down, is a ten year process. It's not one day where you make the leap. And I think people take that out of context, and we make these impulsive, um, yeah, um, yeah, these impulsive decisions that aren't aligned to our priorities because of this belief that, well, like you just got to have a leap of faith. It's like, no, the leap of faith for me has been the last four years of my life. Every single day waking up, despite being scared of what I'm trying to do and, and leaping every single day, that is the leap of faith, not this one time thing. And I think if everyone does that, if everyone acts a little more intentional every single day, then they will live a life they're proud of. And that's what I'm trying to do, to share with people. It's not about getting perfection. It's not 100%. Just be a little more intentional. Just be a little more deliberate about how you spend your time, energy, and attention. And I promise you at the end, you will live a life you're proud of. I love that. I love that. Every single day, uh, you're you're grinding. Do you have a, a short passage or a poem or a quote that you reference that keeps your, your passion on fire? Um, I would say I have a lot, but the one that comes to mind, just top of my head, is something that uh, Denzel Washington said in a convocation speech, and it's, it's very simple. He just said, "Hard work works." Like, like successful people work really hard, and I think that's a really important reminder, especially in 2019 right now, with all of the ads and contents and gurus who are trying to sell you quick solutions you know you don't have to work hard um, you know you, like you do these five things and you'll be a millionaire like no that doesn't work right like if 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 you understand their motive their motive is to sell you something and and i think it's really important to understand that this journey being in the game is not easy you know to your point you know doing this is hard for you and i doing the talks for you and events it's not easy and i think by by you know a trying to make it seem like it's anything easier that that it doesn't require hard work and courage and trade-offs i think it it's um it does it a lot of disservice for the people who are out there going at it every single day. And I think everyone is a reminder that it is hard work and hard work doesn't necessarily mean working 14 hours a day. Hard work can mean doing something you like to do. Hard work can mean waking up and not snoozing your alarm. Hard work can mean doing your cold showers. Hard work just means going at it, being intentional about it every single day and let that compound over time. Mm, dropping the mic right there. <laughs> I love it. Wow, we we are already at the last uh, portion of the Pass the Torch podcast, which is crazy. This this show has just gone. I could definitely sit here and talk to yeah. you for, for hours because you just you you have that passion. Uh, we're both very similar situations. Uh, trust me, I'm going to be hitting you offline. Um, <laughs> Torch, we we've arrived at the time in our program where our guest Ref has one minute. Doesn't have to be a minute <laughs> to pass the torch and leave a legacy. We all know that a person. A mentor is a person who's achieved a level of success that we desire and can effectively guide us to success as well. Based on the level of success you, Raph, have achieved at this point in your life, if you could pass the torch and leave a legacy message to your former self or anyone in a similar situation, how would you pass the torch in one hot minute? Yeah, I would suggest for everyone to be intentional, right? Be intentional and seek to build momentum and progress. I don't think... I think goals are important because it gives you a sense of direction and target, but seek to build momentum because when you seek to build momentum, you get started. You learn along the way and you're going to make mistakes and errors along the way. But if you're intentional about which direction you're going at, if you're intentional about the tools that you bring along the way and the people you bring with you, I truly believe that when you build momentum towards the things you care about, that is what's going to give you whatever your version of success is. Woo! Nothing but, nothing but fire. I love it. Everybody who's just listening to the show, you absolutely need to check out Raf uh, at uh, the My Canvas series and uh, My Technique. Raf, what's the best place to reach you at? I would say Instagram. Um, everyone can find me at mytechni.io. And uh, that's also our website as well, www.mytechni.io. And you can find all of our podcasts, both the monthly, the weekly, the guest appearances. Um, it's all under the Canvas series on all podcast platforms. Awesome. I will make sure I put that in the show notes. Everybody, 
This was awesome. Super excited to finally have Rafael Long <laughs> on the show. This has been another episode of Pass the Torch podcast with Raphael Wong and Levante Santos, and we are reminding you to seek knowledge and pass the torch. Boom. That was awesome, man. Thanks, everybody, for listening to another episode of Pass the Torch podcast. Remember, you can reach out to us and hear the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Uh, it's going to be on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, you can check out all of those uh, social media channels and listen to the podcast anytime. So make sure to do that. And if you really liked Fast Torch Podcast, please give us a review. It helps us as we continue to seek knowledge and pass the torch. Thanks, guys.